Hi everyone. So I wanted to sit down and film a video today um, because I got this new idea. So because on my YouTube channel, I really kind of want to alternate between canning, preserving, homesteading content and reading content. I figured, you know, once or twice a month I may do reading vlogs or different things or videos focused on specific books, but in that month I'm probably going to be reading a lot more books or other books that aren't necessarily featured in the focused video um, or the other book videos. And so I know people kind of do wrap ups at the end of the month, but I thought what would be fun is to actually do a reading vlog that is just filmed with random clips throughout the month, talking about and getting some reactions to the books that I'm reading that are not gonna be featured in other videos. And I thought this would be fun, one, because it kind of acts like a wrap up of all the books that you didn't get to see me read. Also, it gives me a chance to, when I'm reading these books and I'm having reactions and I wanna to talk to people about it or just shout my opinions into the void, I can do that here and make a video out of it. So I'm gonna try it out. Um, and this month it'll only happen for a couple weeks before I maybe post it. Um, so maybe I won't go strictly like January, February, March, April, um, or maybe I will, we'll have to see. So I wanna start off this video talking about the idea, but then also talking and updating you on where my reading's at currently. So in addition to books that I'm reading for other videos, I am currently reading The Holiday Switch, um, and this is by Tiff Marcello. Um, and this book is really cute. Um, it's essentially about um, two kind of kids who are on holiday break working in this famous Christmas town um, based on a movie, and they are just kind of thrown together and have to work together and be in this close um, space together. And at first they kind of, maybe there's some tension between them. Um, and so it kind of evolves from there. It is a holiday romance book. Um, so I think it's gonna be really light and fun. So far I'm on page 57, which is chapter six. And it has been a very cute read so far. Even though it's a little past the holiday season, I'm still enjoying it. And I like the premise of it being, you know, a quaint kind of cozy Christmas town that is inundated with tourists all the time because of this movie that was filmed there. Um, and I like the characters a lot so far. So I think this is gonna definitely be a win, but we'll continue to see how I'm feeling and I'll check in with you. The other book that I am currently reading, I'm actually um, listening to the audiobook and it's called It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. And let me tell you, I have been on a journey with this book. So I got it and reserved it through my local library to listen to the audiobook because it was available and I was looking for audiobooks to listen to. And at first it starts kind of, not slow, but just it didn't hook me right away um, and then eventually we kind of got into it a little more um, and, you know, pretty early on after my initial kind of, eh, I don't know, I don't know how this book is going to be. I actually got really hooked on it early on um, because it, I liked the premise and I was hoping for all these things to happen in this book. And so essentially what this book is, is there is a kind of famous, rich, spoiled, like, girl who's living in LA. And she has some hard times and essentially gets sent to this um, seaside town to kind of learn some lessons about herself and grow. And the whole premise I really enjoy because now this might be a little bit of spoiler territory. I don't know what it kind of, what the blurb is on the back of the book. So just be warned, but essentially she goes to this town and she decides to take over this bar and start renovating this bar while she's in this town for three months. 
Along the way, she meets this cute guy that she falls for because it's a romance. And I really liked it and I was excited to see how she kind of evolved and how she grew through this town. I really like when towns kind of have their own personality and I think this one started off having its kind of own personality and I was really interested in the renovation side of things. I thought that was a cute um, plot point to be going on alongside this romance. But I have a couple issues with the book. So it, so it started off slow for me and I wasn't that invested. Then once we got some things explained, I was like, oh, this could be a four or five star read. I'm really enjoying this. Now I've gotten to the point where I think I'm about 60% through the book and the main love interest, this guy, has throughout the book been shown to us as this kind of really good guy. He's really nice. He's different than all the guys this girl has dated before in LA and he's really cute and charming and they have, they flirt really well together. And then all of a sudden we start getting into the steamy parts of the book and the steamy scenes, normally I don't mind steam, but these have really thrown me off and made me question my initial feelings about this book. So, I'm still invested. I want to see where it goes, but like I said, I'm going to maybe spoil this a little bit to talk about it. So if you want to read this book or haven't yet, feel free to click off. But they get into the first time that they're having sex and it just didn't fit for me because all of a sudden in these sex scenes, they're written, you know, really steamy and the main character both of them actually are trying to be like super sexy and I feel like it's honestly I feel like the sex scenes are kind of the literary equivalent to like porn in that it's super sexual which I get that it's a sex scene but everything is really graphic and the language and the things that the characters are saying and doing during it are just so completely different from how they were presented originally and the character that has been built up. Mainly the main love interest, the guy, because he's been billed to us as the super nice guy um, who's down to earth and he takes the, the main girl on a date at his place, he makes her dinner and he's saying beforehand, you know, I'm grieving the loss of my previous wife and this is my first time going out on a date and I really like this girl. I, I wanna give her a different experience than she's had. And so I'm, I'm not gonna have sex with her. Like I just wanna have a nice date. And pretty immediately when the main girl makes an advance towards him, all of that goes out the window. There's not even really any contemplation that I can remember of him kind of going back and forth or trying to like stop it and make sure that he follows through on his promise to himself to not have sex. And pretty immediately he also shifts and starts saying things during this sex scene, like calling her baby out of nowhere when they've, this is their first date and just very rough and aggressive and in the language he's using, at least it feels like that to me. And so it doesn't feel like it fits with the nice guy kind of image that has been built up with him. So the sex scenes every time really take me out of it and really confuse me because it feels like a completely different person. But I'm going to keep reading. It hasn't been completely ruined for me. I just have been cringing through the sex scenes a little bit, which normally doesn't happen when I read, you know, adult romance books. So. We'll see how it goes. Okay, well, I'll check back in once I've made progress in either of those books or when I start a new book, and we'll just keep this going for the next uh, couple of weeks. See you then. That's how I literally feel. So I have finished reading the book, It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey, and it was not my favorite. I'm gonna have to go check what I actually rated it. I think I rated it like two stars, which is really sad to me 
but I pushed through it and I finished it. I really had hope that it was gonna get better. And it just, for me, it did not get better. It actually, I found myself more and more throughout the story cringing and saying ew and just like gritting my teeth and kind of clenching because it was, there was, I don't know if it was just my bias, but I just, the more and more I went throughout the story, I think because I already felt uncomfortable with certain aspects or didn't like certain things, it just kind of snowballed for me because those things kept happening and more things kept happening that I didn't like. And so it was just this kind of snowball. So it didn't do good things for me. And I even had to take notes while I was going through and listening to this book because there was just things that really got to me and I wanted to make sure I didn't forget them. So this is, I'm gonna try and stay vague with this, but yeah, I think there's not gonna be any super major spoilers. Um, but just warning you, there might be some light spoilers where I'm not gonna give away key plot points, but I'm gonna talk about some scenes that happened um, that inherently mention the two main characters being together or being in a relationship which it's a romance book, so you kind of know that they're gonna be in a relationship. So it shouldn't be too spoilery. But essentially, just throughout the book, I think I already kind of talked about how the person, the main guy love interest, just kind of changed during the sex scenes or when they started being intimate with each other. And it didn't feel like the guy that he was set up to be. And in addition to that, during certain scenes when they were fighting, he was like actually kind of aggressive with her and like chased after her and like spun her, like grabbed her arm, spun her around and like held her in place. So she, the main girl couldn't like walk away, which like, I think people are supposed to be like, oh, he's like fighting for her. He loves her. Like, but it just felt uncomfortable for him to like be asserting his like, dominance over her and like grabbing her in this way and not like allowing her to make the decision um or like just just instead of talking it out he resorted to like physically grabbing her and restraining her and there was along with that a couple of moments where he would just say things that were supposed to be like oh like this shows how much he loves her but it was like i'm taking what is mine now referring to her or you belong in my bed and saying things that like just and I know I've read other things where s similar ish things have maybe been said but I don't think it ever came across as like aggressive or objectifying and so I could just be biased in this book because I started feeling uncomfortable from the beginning but there was also other certain things where like at some point when they're fighting or arguing he just gets completely pissed off for a very minor reason in my opinion and just like storms away and leaves and is like i'm spending the night somewhere else and i think i wrote this down and i'm trying to remember exactly what happened because it's been a day or two since i finished this and since i've been able to film this clip but there's something that happens or so, like either the main girl or the, oh, it, oh my God, it was the sister. The sister is talking to the main girl about their fight and that the guy ran off and she is, the sister essentially goes, who the sister has been pretty level headed throughout this thing, but she just starts becoming wishy-washy and giving like mixed advice. So then the sister is like, no, it's fine. Go after him. Like, he's just a guy. That's how guys are. You know, they got all that testosterone running around. And it was just like, no, like, we shouldn't excuse his behavior. Just like, that's the, you know, that time old phrase of boys will be boys. Like, you shouldn't accept poor behavior just because it's coming from a guy. And so I didn't really like that at all. Um, and my other major gripe with the story was something that I think was 
mainly a gripe because I've noticed it now as I've been reading the um a couple more romance uh, like more adult romances recently where the steam level has been turned up and I think um Kayla from Books and Lala actually talked about this when she was doing her romance series like videos but the again in this book there was a sex scene where they're going to have sex for I think like the first time or something and the two main characters are like oh no what are we gonna do do you have a condom no okay oh no this isn't good we still want to have sex and so the, like in this book specifically this is maybe more of a spoiler of how this went down but oh I'm just like I'm hurting trying like recalling this scene and it's like burned into my memory but the main girl says something to the effect of well okay so you don't have a condom but you know I just before moving to this town I got a physical and so and, and I'm all good I don't have any STDs are, are you good like are you clean and also the language around like calling someone clean to mean they don't have STDs just inherently like makes it seem like if you have an STD, you're dirty. And I think there, it's a lot more complex than that. And that's kind of a, a very narrow minded way to look at it. But anyway, so she says, are you clean? And he's like, yeah, you can trust me. And she's like, cool, I'm on the pill or whatever. So let's just do it. And so it feels very like kind of lax and like, like there's not never a focus on protection or kind of safe sex or, or different things, which I think is really lacking because I think that, you know, sometimes asking for consent or those kinds of things, or, you know, it doesn't have to be a mood killer to talk to someone about using protection or someone wanting to make sure that they're safe and things like that. And I think it's nice when people advocate for their needs. And so that just was a gripe with this book, but more so with a lot of romance books that they never talk about those things and never have those discussions. But anyway, my only other thing, I guess, is that all in all, like, I did really like the premise of the book and I think it could have done so much more. And I think I was a little, uh, backwards when I said in the last clip, I think I said something like, what, the renovation is just over? Like, we haven't talked about it. The renovation wasn't over, but it wasn't focused on very much. Like, there was a couple of things they talked about, but I just wish there would have been more of that. I also wish that in this book, or in romance books in general, and please let me know if you know of any that do this well. Um, and I think I've read some before, but I just wish that there would be a little bit more time spent developing the character's relationship or seeing them develop and go through things where they maybe have to like comfort each other or just spend a you know lazy Saturday afternoon where they're not where there there's not all this sexual tension they're just having fun and enjoying each other and like becoming good friends or just like things that show how a relationship develops into love because we got nothing except that like this relationship was all about steam and that was pretty much the main thing that happened between them and then all of a sudden immediately these two are like inseparable can't live without each other they're saying they love each other and it just doesn't feel very believable um so i feel bad just completely tearing this book apart but I think it could have done a lot and there was some good parts. It just didn't hit the mark for me. So I'm gonna move on. And I actually have already moved on because like I said, I finished this a day or two ago. So I am moving on to Viola Davis's audiobook. I'm still reading Holiday Switch or whatever it's called um, in person, but, or like physically. But I'm starting, I started listening to Viola Davis's audiobook. And for the life of me, I cannot think of the name of it right now. But I'll talk about the name of it in the next clip. Um, but essentially, so far, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty average. It hasn't blown things out of the water. It hasn't like completely changed my life. 
but I think it's been a really good story so far. I think it's really important. I didn't know a lot of the stuff that Viola Davis went through growing up, and I think it's really important that she's sharing that story. Um, but so far, for probably the first 30% of the book, I was having difficulty with it because it, it it's really heavy, so I will caution people with that. There's a lot of really heavy stuff. I don't think you should shy away from it because I think people should know how difficult it is for people who are living in poverty um, and how terrible the conditions are for some people. I think a lot of people don't realize that and so we should be paying attention and realizing and therefore turning that into our own personal advocacy and like changing some of these systems that keep people down and keep them impoverished. And so I think that's important to learn and listen to and hear. Um, but it's it's been very heavy and it hasn't, at least in the first 30%, it didn't feel like there was a clear kind of like through line or it was just kind of jumping around to different parts of her growing up. But now I'm actually really enjoying it now that I'm about half-ish way through because I'm getting a lot more of like how all of these pieces she showed us are kind of fitting together and how they've kind of impacted her throughout her life. And the book is by no means over yet. I'm like 50, 60% of the way through, but I'm, I'm starting to see those through lines and starting to see how kind of the overarching narrative of her life and these things that she's gone through and what she's kind of taking away from it. And so that's been really exciting to see. So I'm actually pretty excited to finish up the book. Um, I think I will be finishing it pretty soon, probably definitely by the end of January. So I'll probably include another clip where I check back in on my final thoughts on the book or if something really groundbreaking or wild happens um, where I want to check in. But I will see you next time I have an update for you. Okay, I've got another update for you. So I finished Finding Me by Viola Davis and I ended up giving it four stars. I really liked it. I think towards the end of the book, it definitely had and brought out what I was looking for in terms of it kind of brought all of the things that she had been talking about throughout the first part of the book, throughout her childhood, it kind of brought it all around and had a more cohesive kind of narrative or just, uh, you really saw the through lines throughout the story, um, which weren't super apparent right away in the beginning, but then they got more apparent. And I think she had really interesting conversations about poverty and race, and I think they were really important um, to listen to. And I really enjoyed, even though it was hard at times, getting to see, because I knew not any of the stuff. I knew very little of what she talked about in her story. I didn't know her background. And so I think that really makes me understand a lot more the different like roles that she's taken on and the career that she's had and really appreciate that a lot more, even though I already thought she was a phenomenal actor. Um, and so I ended up really enjoying it, and I was sad when it ended. It was a good memoir, um, but it didn't knock things out of the park for me the way some other memoirs have. Actually, I don't know if any memoirs have ever hit it out of the park for me and gotten a five stars. Maybe Becoming by Michelle Obama, that was really good. Um, but yeah, so because I finished that, Usually I immediately start another audiobook because I like to have a physical book and an audiobook going at the same time. And there are so many books I want to get to. And so, so there's plenty of them on my shelf that I need to get to. So the next audiobook that I started was one that I actually have physically on my shelf that I bought because I just knew. I had a sixth sense. I knew that I was going to love this book and oh my gosh. I have already listened to about an hour and a half of the book and holy moly, it's so good. So I, it is called Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe and I have absolutely been loving this book. It tells the story of two girls, well, 
I it tells the story of this main girl and then also another girl that she's starting to develop a friendship with and there's a whole cast of characters kind of her friends um, and things like that but as you probably know because this book was all over the place when it came out and was very popular the story actually follows two girls and the two main girls um, end up I think falling for each other and so it's a sapphic romance but I think there's a lot more to the story so far or a lot more to the story than that. So in addition to being a sapphic romance this book also takes place in 1954 in I believe San Francisco and so it talks a lot about the Red Scare paranoia which is if you don't know um, when there was a lot of fear in the United States and kind of paranoia around communism and people being communist and spies for communist countries and things like that. And so unfortunately that made America a very dangerous place for a lot of folks, especially Chinese Americans like the main character Lily. And so that's pretty much a line off of the back of the book. but. Essentially, it talks a lot about, um, so far, and I'm only an hour and a half into the audiobook, which I think is 12 hours long, um, it talks a bit about, and it's starting to set up this scene about to have this political commentary and not even so much of like commenting on these things and really infusing like the author's values or views so far, but it's more so just, I think, and maybe this will change, but illustrating the reality of what life was like back then for some of these folks with the threat of deportation and the threat of separating families and just kind of this overall narrative in multiple areas of Lily's life of needing to kind of hide and be scared and make herself small and not seen by other people, both because of her emerging sexuality that she's starting to discover and this love interest that is developing, but also with hiding her identity and trying to perform the like perfect American ideal of what America tells people you should be and so that she keeps her family safe and makes sure that her dad doesn't get deported. And so already I am so hooked. I think about listening to this audiobook all the time and can't stop and want to go listen to it right now some more. So I think I'm going to breeze through this and honestly, I'm going to say it, I'm predicting a five star read from this. So we'll see um, if that comes true, um, but I will let you all know how it pans out. Okay, so I've got two updates for you. So the first is an actual reading update on the holiday switch and what I'm thinking of it so far. The second is the, I wanted to show you a book that I recently just got. I went to one of the cute independent bookstores here in town with two of my friends um, yesterday and I got this book that I'm really excited about. I think I've actually heard of this book and seen it before, but then actually saw it in person when we went, and so had to have been a sign. So I decided to get it. So it is called The Passing Playbook, and it is by Isaac Fitzsimmons. And essentially this book, I believe, is about um, two boys. One, it both play soccer together, and I think they're on the same soccer team. Um, and it looks like they're in 10th grade, and Spencer, the, one of the main characters, just recently moved to a new high school in Ohio because I believe at his old high school he was getting bullied. So he's a black trans man, but at this school, because of his bullying at his old school, he has decided to go stealth. If you don't know what that means, essentially he is um, not telling people about his identity and he's trying to pass as a boy, um, and so he is just letting everyone believe that he is a cisgender boy um, and not talking about his trans identity. But he meets another guy who is um, on the soccer team and I think they start falling for each other and I'm sure hijinks and touching moments will ensue. So very excited to pick that one up soon. 
it is kind of a shorter read. It's got pretty big font, so um, another good one that I'm hoping to add to my LGBT shelf. So let's talk about The Holiday Switch. This book, I am 177 pages in, so I think that's like 60% of the way, and it is so absolutely freaking adorable. It is so much fun. It's a very quick read. Um, it goes by very fast. Tonight, I just sat down for not even that long, and I read 120 pages, I think. So I am eating it up. I am probably going to finish it tomorrow. It's very cute. The one thing that I really wanted that kind of prompted me to record a clip was I was so excited about there's a very cute moment where, and this may be is a little bit of a spoiler. It's not like a big plot point, but just something that was really cute. It made me like super mega grin um, was the two characters who have kind of been like were enemies or calling each other their nemesis. They um, have been nicer to each other lately and they're kind of, you know, wrapped up and entangled in all these situations together. And so they kind of rely on each other. But as, you know, their relationship starts progressing um, to more of a friendship than an enemy ship, I guess, um, they are brought together and have to sing a karaoke song together. I think it's um, a song from Greece that they sing together. Let me look. Yes, so it's actually Summer Nights from Greece. And so it's a cute song that they have to sing together. And so that was just a really cute scene that I really enjoyed. And it's a very light read and I'm so excited to finish it and see where it goes. I think I already kind of have an idea of what's gonna happen, but I just wanna see it play out because it's really nice to, after a long day, just kind of unwind with um, something like this that isn't mindless, but it, it's just like very easy to consume and just gives you a little uh, smile. So I think that is actually the farthest that I'm gonna get in uh, January. So it's January, it's the night of January 30th right now. So technically I have one more day tomorrow, but I'm probably gonna edit this video tomorrow and post it. And so that's actually the final check-in where I will leave you. And so if you want to see my final thoughts on the holiday switch, or on Last Night at the Telegraph Club. Come back in a month or so, and I will post my February miscellaneous reading vlog, where you'll get to see my reactions to both of those books. So I'll leave you there. And until then, why don't you let me know, comment down below what your favorite book that you read this January was. And until next time, stay grounded.